and a very good morning to you. It's Sunday, the 2nd of July, 2017. Welcome to this morning's United Kingdom. Look at these. I mean, look at them. It's awful, isn't it? On the way back from uh, church this morning, uh, I uh, noticed I didn't have any bananas left uh, last night. And very, very important to have bananas in the house or something so that you're not tempted to buy crisps or something like that. Remember, we're on the Slimmer's World. Slimmer's World, eight pounds so far. Three and a half the first week down. Two the second week down. Three and a half the third week down. One up on the, on the fourth week. So we're working hard. We're working hard and it's important to have something in the house so you're not tempted to pop down to the local co-op, you know, for bags of crisps or digestive chocolate biscuits or bread or cakes or Doritos, the cheesy ones. Not allowed to have any of those. Bananas, that's the way to go. But what can you do with this? Look how small that is. Or maybe you can't see. Look, put it a bit in my hand. Look, what can you do with this, ladies? And there's a whole bunch of them. Now, I always worry. I don't usually buy bananas in bags because I'm always terrified and I examine the bananas carefully to check that there are no spiders in there. Because you don't know, some of those foreigners, dear, they hate us. They hate us. Absol We've only got to look at that lot. Old Merkel and Co, dear. They hate us, dear. And they wouldn't think twice about putting a nasty spider in those bananas. I'm telling you now. But the size of these, I mean, they're tiny. Look at these. I shall have to have three for one. Dear, dear me. And that's down the co-op this morning. Shocking. Anyway, I've had one already with my peels this morning. Uh, I got those on the way back from church. Very funny in the church this morning. Now, obviously, I don't suppose for one moment any of you go to church, but I do. Uh, nine o'clock on a Sunday morning, I go down to the Corpus Christi in Wokingham. And there's a bit in the mass. It's quite early on for mass read service, OK, for mass read service. So there's a bit in the mass. We are welcomed. We do a bit of singing. And then the children go into another room to have kind of a, a children's version of readings and things like that. So he calls the children. OK, the children like to come forward and go to the children's liturgy. Now, this whole thing isn't as easy as it sounds. They've all got to have a little bit of paper with permission on and all this. Oh, it's all due to, uh, what, what's that called? The CBR, CBI check? I don't know what it is, something like that. So they've all got to have a little bit of paper if they're on their own. Or if they're with parents, that's OK. And they all go in this way. So uh, the first one who gets there gets to hold the book, which is the Bible. OK, they get to hold the book. Anyway, so this little girl's come round like that and she's got the book. And then there's another girl and another girl behind her says in a loud voice like this. Why does she always get the book? <laughs> At which point the entire congregation fell about laughing, including the priest, Father David, this morning. So that was a bit exciting. Why should she get the book if she went like this? Shock horror. <laughs> I love it. And then, uh, of course, Vivian's sitting next to me as well. We sit next to Vivian at church. She's got a wonderful singing voice. She was doing the readings this morning. Uh, and if something goes wrong, like she's got she's got these glasses, I think she's got the glass. I can't remember if she's got the glasses on or not. Sometimes she's got the glasses on. And if something goes wrong, because she's very proper, Vivian, she's a lovely lady, but she's very proper. OK, she likes things done properly, like this show, for example. You know, hours of rehearsals I've done over the last few days just to bring this this morsel of entertainment into your sad, lonely, pathetic lives this morning. OK, it's true. It's true. Anyway, and if something goes wrong, she she leans over to me like this. Like that. <laughs> and today's leaning over like that is when the priest. Now, what bit was he singing? Glory, honour is yours, almighty father, forever. And, and then when he said ever, ever, uh, it went a bit like that. He frogged. It's known as frogging when you you're singing and suddenly for some reason that note uh, goes, uh, a uh, bit like that. It's called frogging. And the priest frogged and immediately I got the elbow. Like that from Vivian. <laughs> oh, it's a laugh a minute. You should come down. Come down, all are welcome. You know, make sure you bring yourself a fiver. Don't embarrass yourselves by putting loose change into that collection box. I watch to see who puts what in. I make notes. I make notes of who's putting in a few coppers. 
and who's putting in a fiver. Dear, dear, man. Coppers in there, please. So that was nice. Uh, I came back cycling through the fields once again of uh, uh, Woking I'm along the, a little road called Waterloo Road. It's just a lovely road. In fact, I, as I was cycling back there, it would have been about run about quarter past ten this morning. There's no one on the road at that time. Um, I thought to myself, maybe I should record the first bit of the show today out here so you can actually see what I cycle through. I'm so lucky to live out here. I'm so lucky to live out here in Bracknell in Berkshire. I mean, but horses wouldn't... If you paid me £10 million, I wouldn't live in London, honestly. When you see all the news on the television and all that about what's going on, it's just horrendous. It really is. I'll come back to that uh, uh, in a moment. So I cycled back here and uh, I thought I'd stop at the Corop. Now, the Corop at the moment, just down the road from me, that's having a refit. Oh, yeah, a refurbishment. How exciting! The co-op is having a refurbishment. It's very cheap in there. Stuff is cheap in there. That that bag of... Well, I don't know about that bag of bananas. That was a pound. That 95 pence, that was. But one of my favourite uh, members of the staff uh, was in today, Jack. He's very, very delicious. Little Jack is in there. Well, it's not little. It's actually quite tall. Probably about 21, 22 years old. Nice, very pleasing on the eye. A little bit like myself. You know, very, very pleasing on the eye. So he's in there. No, he's not in there. They're having a refurbishment. So the shop is closed, but they've got like this porter cabin type thing that is open, the same as the co-op was open, and it's got stuff in there. Isn't that the strangest thing? There's like a little cooling cabinet. And it's got things like sausages and all the milks in there. It's got bread. It's got a few vegetables in there. Uh, newspapers, some groceries, you know, just general uh, normal stock cupboard stuff like tins of beans, tins of peas. They've got potatoes, no cigarettes and no booze. I mean, can you just imagine that? Oh, Christ, they'd have that open, open stir straight away, wouldn't they? With the old crowbars. Oh, where's the cigarettes? Well, there aren't any in there, my friend. No cigarettes in there. And, um... I thought, well, I'll, I'll try and see if they've got any. Don't suppose you've got any bananas? And he said, yes, we have. And he produced, you know, he produced the, 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 what, what must be, hang on a minute, what must be some of the smallest bananas I've ever seen in my life. They, they probably look big to you, as I say. What, what have I got? Oh, iPhone. OK, look, look, look. Bloody iPhone's bigger than the bananas, nearly. <laughs> so I bought those, 95 pence. Um, which actually for that, that size banana is quite dear. You usually get great big ones for 89 pence. It's in Waitrose. Great big ones for 89 pence. So that was it. And uh, I came home, had my pills, and here I am uh, chatting to you today. I've been very busy the last couple of days, actually. Really busy. Uh, yesterday morning, uh, I had to do some gardening. The weeds in my garden bit against my my big patch against the fence are kind of taken over a little bit uh, but they're very easy to pull up actually uh, in fact they're probably easier to pull up once you've grown them a bit you know because weeds you can tell a weed from a plant because a weed you'll grab it pull it now if it comes out easily it's a weed all right they're very very shallow roots if you pull something it won't come leave it alone it's probably a plant or a small tree something like that and i've got roses i've got a rose in there um, I did fertilise them the other day. I got this green, grow. I think it's grow slow, grow more, grow fast. It's like a blue powder stuff and you mix it in this little bottle of stuff and you just spray it on as if you're watering the garden. So I put that on them uh, the other day to see if I get any more flowers, to see if it's true what they say. I mean, I've got a lot of plants, just not so many flowers. It may be that they're going to come a little bit later. Um, I, I hope so anyway, you know. So I did that yesterday and then... I met up with uh, Auntie Marion. Now, you remember Auntie Marion? She told me off the other week. She told me off because I was making my nephews and my nieces' children too, and I quote, too excited. I was making them too... <laughs> I mean, come on. It's got to be exciting seeing Uncle Chris, isn't it? Eh? Wondering what evilness I'm going to teach them next? So there I was gently throwing them around this place and Auntie Marion told me of because I'm making them too excited. So I met up with her yesterday and uh, Cousin Helen, Judge Cousin, Judge Helen, we're call her, because she judges me. She actually, she didn't judge me. Yes, she did. She did, did judge me yesterday. She said I was late. I was three minutes late. Honestly, dear. Three minutes late I was. Um, so I was judged on that. 
and Cousin Hazel was there, and also Cousin Vince at the moment is over from Australia. I think he's going back today. Malaysian Airlines is going on. Jesus! Is he for real? He's going on Malaysia Airlines back to Australia. And the reason being, it's very cheap on there at the moment. Ha! Huh, surprise, surprise! Well, they lost two planes last year, didn't they? Blimey! Still rather get on a Malaysian Airlines than a Ryanair flight, though. Oh, dear, sod that. Terrible, terrible on those you know, Ryanair. Oh, 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 is that an extra earring? Oh, oh, you didn't write that down. That's an extra £250, please. It's a bit like that on Ryanair, isn't it? You know, you've been. I'm sure you have been on Ryanair. Anyway, he's flying back to Malaysia Airlines, and I think he's um, uh, going back today. So I met up with them at a lovely, lovely place uh, called The Anchor, which is in Weybridge, and it's on a canal. It's on a canal. It was a beautiful day. Uh, the only thing is you've got to go down a, a really narrow road to get there. And uh, you've got to take it easy. I'm, I'm, a, I'm a careful driver. I don't go mad at all. I used to when I was younger. Not anymore. You know, I'm quite happy on the motorway. 55 mile an hour watching these idiots uh, tearing up and down. My mate Ron said yesterday on the way to work, um, he noticed there were two cars in the outside lane. And literally, you know, there were inches between these two cars, both doing about 80, 90 mile an hour in the fast lane. I mean, how stupid can he be? The one in the front's only got to touch his brake, hasn't he? I mean, it's just ridiculous. It's ridiculous. Did I ever do that? No, I don't think I... I, do, I went too fast. I did I used to drive too fast. Maybe that's a young man thing, I don't know. Mind you, even some of the girls are doing it, aren't they? They're, they're doing their makeup, dear. <laughs> you know, ooh, 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 ooh. one hand here, one hand here, you know, and, and phone there. They're like that in the car, and a burger in their lap. <laughs> I always wondered what that smell was. Um... Uh, so we went to the a uh, anchor, as I say, in Weybridge. And the journey from here to there is very pleasant. It's only about half an hour away. I'm going to take my mate there, uh, possibly Tuesday afternoon after I've been to Slimmer's World. And uh, the drive there is just nice. It's all green and trees and fields and, and different houses. Not like new houses. I hate new houses. All look the same, like Legoland. Every house is exactly the same as the one next door. No, none of that. They're all different houses. Some bungalows, some houses, some big ones, some little ones. Lovely roads and then green and, and uh, uh, trees and all that. And while I was driving along there and we got and I, and I got there, you know, over this little thing. And you have to go over a little bridge, very narrow bridge. You go over that and then you enter the car park and it's lovely. And I, 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 I'm coming back to that thing, you know, how lucky I am to live out here. I thought to myself, you know, when you see the news about stuff going on in London or Manchester or Birmingham or Glasgow or, you know, big cities, big cities, the trouble they have there, the awful people, just horrible people in a lot of these places. Not everyone, not everyone. But while I'm driving alone, I'm looking around, you know, seeing different people walking around. I'm thinking, you know... I feel completely safe here. Nothing's going to happen. There's not rubbish all over the ground. People don't half eat a kebab and throw the rubbish on the ground like they do in London. Just nice people. Well-behaved, respectful people. Which carried on in the restaurant. We got into the restaurant um, and I sat there and I looked around and I thought, you know, there's no children running around uncontrolled children running around or anything like that in there. Just nice people. No no shouting. No tables full of girls or lads screaming and shouting obscenities at each other. No one's having a row. Just nice and pleasant and nice people. And I sat there, actually in the car on the way there, thinking, why can't it be like this everywhere? Why is there, like, areas of this country, if all countries, all countries, why is there areas of all countries that you wouldn't want to go to? Now, as you know, I love the jobs I do. I love my karaoke. We've got a karaoke tonight in Camden Town. Every Sunday night, it's karaoke at 
the Camden Eye. We call it Karaoke Eye because it's the Camden Eye, you see. People keep pulling me up. They see the poster says Karaoke Eye. Oh, you've got a spelling mistake in that. No, I haven't. I haven't got a spelling mistake. It's supposed to be, it's the Camden Eye. So we've called it Karaoke Eye. Get it? Um, oh, oh no, I, I, I still don't think I get that. <laughs> well, sad you are. <laughs> um, and I drive there, whether it's to Camden tonight, Sunday night, 8 to 11, or King's Cross on Monday and Friday, or the King's Head Theatre Bar for the quiz on Wednesday, or again to King's Cross uh, on Saturday nights. I drive there and I love doing my little drop. What I don't like is the drive there. Strangely enough, I even hate more the drive back. I can't wait to get out of London. How sad is that? The, the, the cars, the grime, a lot of the people, you know, you, you watch them walking by. Oh, don't think I'd like to talk to you. You know what I mean? And I thought how lucky I am to live here. In, in, going back to cars, actually, on the way home last night, I mean, some blood. And it was an Uber driver, Uber driver and a Prius. <clears throat> so there's a roundabout in Chiswick. Three like one, two, three, four lanes. There's four lanes. OK. Roundabout coming from Hammersmith. Coming up to Chiswick roundabout, lane one on the right hand side goes right or straight on. Lane two goes straight on. Lane three goes straight on. Lane four goes straight on or left. Or it might be three lanes, can't remember now. So I'm in lane four, indicating to go right. I'm just going round here and all of a sudden, and if I hadn't slammed on my brakes, he would have hit me, uh, all of a sudden, this idiot Uber driver, driving a Prius, as usual, suddenly indicates to the left and cuts across me. Very, very lucky. What a blooming idiot. Uber drivers should be dragged out of their cars and beaten in the road, every last one of them, and hung out to dry. That's what I recommend, and it should happen immediately. Uber drivers, you know what I'd like to do to all those Uber drivers? All right, most of them. Most of them who have no idea how to drive or indeed how to speak English, what they should be done is I'd like to get one of their Priuses, attach them to the back of the Prius and drag them along the floor until their skin wears off. I really would. They have no idea. They have completely destroyed driving in London. They have not got a clue. Anyway, that was me last night, a, a near accident. I got home, as you can see, still sitting here. Um, and uh, I, I, I am, I, I feel so lucky to be able to live out here. I'm not quite, when I first moved out of here, I used to live in Wandsworth and I thought this was the country. This to me was the country, you know, grass and trees and all that. But actually it's not, it's a large town. It's a very green town. You know, a lot of plants and trees and grass. I love it here. And I'm not too far away from that if I want to go in. But I only go to London for work. I don't go out anymore. Can't be bothered with all that. Sitting there in, in a pub somewhere with um, uh, people eyeing you up and down and judging you all the time. I don't want to do that anymore. Don't do it. Don't go clubs or anything like that. Quite happy to sit here or do something around here, you know, on a night of. I'm so lucky to live here. Perhaps you live in London. Do you prefer living in London? Would, would you... If you're living in London, would you would you consider moving outside London? Would you or, or are you quite happy in there? Have I got completely the wrong picture because I don't live there anymore? I used to live in Roehampton, Peckham and Wandsworth. And I left Wandsworth in 1992 to come out here to Bracknell in Berkshire. What about you? Maybe you're stuck in London and you can't get out. Would you like to leave London to somewhere a little bit more leafy? Even like uh, someone like Hemel Hempstead, something like that. If so, why don't you give a call and tell me about it? Lines are now open, boys and girls. Operators are standing by. Otero 3477 is my local London number, OK? Be lovely to hear from you today. Otero 3477 that's the phone number. Uh, you can also Skype in. My Skype username is 
all one word, United Kingdom Talk. Skype username, United Kingdom Talk, or phone in 20 3477 is the phone in number. Let's read uh, some of your wonderful little messages. And uh, thank you, as always, boys and girls, uh, those of you that have shared the show to your Facebook walls. That's always, always appreciated. I really do appreciate that. We'll take a call now coming in from... Uh, 0208. Now, where's that? 0208. 743. Hammersmith, I think. Hello, Hammersmith. Who's that? Hello? No, nope, that one's gone. Okay, let's try Adam. Hello to Adam the Plumber. Greetings. Good morning, Chris Ridden. Good it's morning, Adam. How are you today? All right? I'm very well, my friend. How are you? How is life in your sad, lonely, pathetic life, darling? Um, as bad as sad and lonely as pathetic as yours, really. <laughs> Now, you moved out. You're in Sidcup now, is it? Sidcup. Yeah, now, Sidcup in Kent. To you, OK, coming mm. from uh, Lewisham? Uh, Dulwich? Dulwich, Lewisham. Right. I've lived all over London. So so coming the only f- part of London I haven't lived in is West London. Would you consider sort of Sidcup a little bit more countrified, or is it... or not? I it, don't know how... Believe, I mean, believe it or not, I, I was a bit worried about moving out here, because it, it is classed as Kent, even though it is within the London Darling Code. Right. Um, so it is, you know, it's still, you know, jump on the train, it's only 20 minutes into the centre of town. Well, I mean, that, um, don't, I shouldn't worry about that London Darling Code. That goes way past London now, that da- London Darling Code. Yeah. Oh, yeah, exactly, yeah. yeah. It's, uh, there's, a, there's actually something on YouTube about uh, where, where do you consider London to be? Yeah. And um, where do you consider it to end? And, you know, you got the, you go by the M25, the London Darling Code, the Burroughs code and, and it just goes out and out and out and as you say yeah. it goes further and further out. Anyway, uh, so living in City Cup, it's lovely. Say that again? I can, it, it's lovely living in Living Sid in Sid Cup. Cup, yeah. Do you yeah, hear birds um, singing in the morning? I, can, I mean, basically, let's say I can... Now you're, now you're waving there. that phone around in front of your face, aren't you, dear? Hang on, let me adjust. There we go, how's that? Keep it in one Let's... place, dear. Continue. OK. Anyway, so as I say, um, I can go out onto my balcony on a Sunday morning and um, all I can hear is church bells and bird song. Can we have an impression? Can we have an example of the church bells and the bird song, please? Uh, OK, uh, church bells. Let's see. How ch- well, um, let's see. Hold on a minute. Just trying to think how you do church bells. Uh... <laughs> ding dong, ding dong, ding dong, ding dong. There you I go. Thought, yeah, that's church bells. I thought that was excellent. In a, when I used to play the organ at St Joseph's in Roehampton, uh, we had a mm. keypad, like a, mm-hmm. uh, like a like a very small piano keypad. It was about one and a half octaves. You know, about ten notes. And mm-hmm. each note referred to one of the bells. And you could actually play tunes on these bells. Oh, I loved it. You know, or yeah. you could go up and down the scale. So, dun, 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 dun. And all you'd have to do is play these keys and the bells would ring in the in the, um, in the the steeple. How fabulous was that? Oh, lovely. Hmm. Yeah, so I, I really enjoy living out here. It's um, yep. okay, very peaceful and tranquil. We haven't um, had the know, bird song yet. The bird song, please. Oh, bird song. Um, let's see, bird song. How can we do bird song? Um, I don't know. Tweet, 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 tweet. How's that? Oh, well. Uh, if that's no, the best, you know, no, no, no. I'm sure that's the best you can do. Who am I to I criticise your I, I bird song, lovey? Better. Hold on, hang on, hang on. Let's, let's see if I can do better. Let me just see. Can you do uh, a wood pigeon? A wood pigeon. A wood pigeon. Yeah. That's the one. That's the one. That's the one. Or a woodpecker. Can you do a woodpecker? We got a woodpecker around here. Seven trees have fallen down since you've been on the phone. All oh, right. Oh God. That many. Do a woodpecker. Uh, woodpecker. Hold on. Let's see. <laughs> How's that? Don't think that's a woodpecker, lovey. Don't no. think that's a woodpecker, lovey. No. A woodpecker is... Oh, right, OK. Because it's pecking at the wood. It's pecking at the wood. I'm pecking at the wood. I'm pecking at the wood. I am a woodpecker. That's a woodpecker, lovey. Ah. But they don't okay. actually talk. 
That was me just pretending that a woodpecker talks, although they don't. Uh huh. <clears throat> um, how about this one? Yes. Uh, this is more wood. Uh, let's see. This is more woodpecker. Hold on. Uh, can I do it? Can I do it? Can I do it? No, I don't think I can. It's it's more of a tapping noise, is it? It's, well, a woodpecker is, yes, sir. Because what they do is yeah. they go up the tree and start pecking away at the wood. Another tree's just gone down now. I heard it outside. <laughs> yes, they do. They... Perhaps you'd like me to chop it yeah. up. You can use it in your DIY things. Oh. Maybe, maybe this will do it. <laughs> is that more of a woodpecker? Oh, that's the woody well, woodpecker song. Well... That's not a real woodpecker, though, is it? That's a cartoon. Oh, don't, I think don't, blow um, my, don't blow my bubble after all these years. I've followed, I've followed Woody Woodpecker for years. I, I, I think you're taking the rise out of me now, lovey. I asked no, you to do a woodpecker, and you just, you just, you just uh, taking a mick, love. No, I wouldn't do that to you, Chris. <laughs> you're too, you're too much of a nice person to do that. Now to. we haven't spoken since your last trip to Slimmer's World, lovey. On. I think you go Wednesdays, don't you? Yes, that's right. Now, as you know, I put a pound on this week. How did you do, Lovey? Well, as as your number one fan, and uh, I long to aspire to be somebody like your good self, I did a, the same. a lot of people do, yes, Lovey. And I did exactly the same. I put a pound on, just so you wouldn't feel so bad about putting a pound on. I put one oh, on for you as well. You put a pound on as well? Yes. OK. Oh, dear. Dear, dear me. And do you know how you did that? Do you know how? Or did it just happen? Um, yes, I think I did. Because uh, my pound well, just happened. I don't know how it happened. Honestly, I don't. Well, as I, say, as I say, your pound, I think, is just your body adjusting. I think you'll find it will carry on going yeah. down now. Oh, well, I think, I think you know, over the years, depending what mm. I've put inside myself, the body has yep. adjusted. You know, it's become wider the bigger the things you've put in. That's true. This is true. Yes, it, it does. You know, the body will adjust to whatever you put into it. Yes. Whether it be small or large, large quantities. Yes. Now, yesterday, yesterday mm -hmm. I was telling you about my, my little trip to this wonderful pub called The Anchor. All um, right, yes. Some members of my family. So the, the menu mm -hmm. comes, the menu comes. And, of course, I'm, I'm not, I, I don't like going out to eat. Yeah, it's got to that stage now. I don't like going out to eat because I look at the menu and I think, oh, you know, oh, I don't fancy any of this. And that, that's the truth. Mm -hmm. That's the truth. Yeah. So I ended up having, well, first of all, mm -hmm. I mean, the only thing I could just about try, I thought I'd try carrot and coriander, coriander soup with a bread roll. Right. I thought, OK, well, I'll have one bread roll, which would be the only bread mm -hmm. roll I've had in the like four weeks. I thought, OK, well, I'll yep. have that. And then she got, I thought, I don't know what that's like. And then she'd come back, oh, there's no more of that soup left. We've got mushroom now. Is that all? I thought, oh, yeah, let's have some of that. Now, my guess is it would have been cream of mushroom, OK? Because mm -hmm. that's the trouble. When you go out, you don't know what they're cooking it with. That's the problem, isn't nope. it? So this I had that. True. And I looked at the main menu. And the only thing there was, remember, I'm vegetarian. There was this yep. tofu salad. And I, oh, I don't, don't like, I'm not getting on tofu. Really not. Mm -hmm. Or a chickpea and butter squash burger, which, of right. course, would have come with chips. No, I don't fancy that either. I looked at all these things and then I had to turn them. And in the end, I just ordered two sides, which were garlic mm. bread and onion rings. And that's all I had. That's all I had there. No tomato sauce or anything. Mm. So that's quite a bad thing to have. But... You know, once in the week. But then, but then you hardly have any sins anyway, do you? Well, last week I had hardly any sins at all, and I put on a pound. Now I'm mm. I'm thinking here that actually you need to have a few sins, or a yes. shall we say, a sinful meal once or twice a week. I think that's what you've mm -hmm. got to do. Because that week I lost three and a half pounds. I'd had two yep. sinful meals. There was the dinner. <clears throat> where I had mm -hmm. the spaghetti uh, spaghetti and sauce, but in a restaurant, so you don't know. It's all right. probably done in oil there, you know. whereas I'd do it in water. Mm -hmm. And then I went out for that roast dinner. You remember that? Which came out to yes, about yes. 70 or 80 sins on the Sunday. Mm -hmm. Two days later, I weighed myself and lost three and a half pounds. 
So I have a feeling <laughs> that you have to have sins during the week. Sorry, yeah, boss, I because... think you do, because you see, what, what will actually happen is this. If you starve your body too much, your body will start storing the fat. Oh, but I'm not starving. I'm eating no, lots, I know, no. but no I sins. Know, but your, but that's because your body's telling you you're okay, because... Yeah. You know, it, it, it doesn't, you don't necessarily have to starve because the body, what the body is doing is it's storing the fact that you don't have that starving feeling. Yes. You see what yes. I mean? Yeah, I'm with you. That's what, I, with that's you. what I believe happens. Uh, so maybe, um, so we'll see what happens. Body... So I'm now uh, almost sin free again. I'm going to, mm -hmm. uh, what I'm having for dinner today is one of my favourite things is uh, fried onions, fried eggs, yep. and a tin of beans. I love that meal. I that love that. Lovely. Meal. Oh, it's delicious. And I have an awful lot of onions. You know those chopped up onions you buy, usually in the supermarket? Um, yes. And Waitrose do red onions, and it's like two mm -hmm. packets, and it's taped up to make it one. Well, I have both right. of those. <laughs> oh, I love onions. Fried onions. Delicious. With the spray light. Mm -hmm. So I'm having that for lunch today. I'm looking forward to that. That sounds good. That sounds, that sounds like a good meal. Yes. Of course, you'll, you'll be using your fry light, so yes. you won't be... Uh... What are you having? Uh, today I will have, uh, let's see, dead animal. That's what what dead animal bacon. are you eating today, dear? Uh, dead chicken. Oh, dead chicken, okay. Dead chicken. Yeah. Um, I shall have that with baked beans yeah. and mashed potato. Oh, that uh, sounds good. Oh, no. Mashed shop, potatoes? Shop bought mashed potatoes, though. Oh, my God. With butter in it and milk? Uh uh, yeah, yes, I'm uh, uh, a red light five, has just come five, on in my studio. Five sins. Oh my god! But is that is five that sins. is that the only sins you're having? So that'd be all right, wouldn't it? Really? Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. I mean, yeah, exactly. I, I have to say, I was tempted yesterday at the meal by the treacle sponge with custard, but I didn't have it. How good right. am I? <laughs> Are you along to karaoke Sorry. tonight, dear? Uh, karaoke, yes. Uh, you've got karaoke tonight, haven't you? Yes, you, are you um, coming to tonight, are you? Down at the Cam, at Cam and I. Oh, OK. Uh, I'll see if... Sorry, go on. Oh, sorry, I thought you said we were coming then. No? I, I'm, I may try and come along if I can. Oh, OK. Tonight. I've had a rather a hectic weekend. I've been working down in Maidstone. Have you? Oh. Yes, I've been uh, refitting a sauna. Redo? Be a new... Refitting a sauna? Re Refitting a sauna, yeah. Oh, well, all, the, all the Norwegians have got those, haven't they? They've got saunas. Yeah. And they go in there in the middle of the winter. I've seen mm -hmm. this on the television. They're in the sauna in the middle of the winter. And they stay in there for about half hour. And all of a sudden, they throw the doors open and then run outside and roll around in the snow. What the hell's all that about? Very strange and mysterious, isn't it? I mean, it? I won't even get in the swimming pool if it's cold. Actually, I do. <laughs> My mate won't. Oh, my mate won't. Hmm. Oh, it's hilarious. He puts this... To, oh, no, I'm not going in today. It's too cold and goes and gets changed again. Oh, how ridiculous. <laughs> well, I better how read ridiculous. some of these messages out. Thanks for calling in, well, young Adam. Cheers, then, Chris. Take care. Have a lovely afternoon. Bye. Cheerio now. Thank bye. Bye-bye. Our uh, favourite caller there, Adam the Plumber, calling in from Siddercup. Siddercup. Let's read some of your messages coming in today. Good morning to uh, Shania. Hello, Shania. Wendy Young's with us. Morning, Wendy. Uh, Diane Jebs there. Good morning, Diane. She had her birthday the other day, didn't you, Diane? I sang to you. I sang to you, even now. You can see that, actually, on our karaoke stream. But I went up the stairs. I made an entrance with that one. I went up the stairs and came down and went and sung personally to people, like the big stars do. They, they do that. Good morning to Stephen Fairman. Morning, sir. I could do with your advice. What's up, Stephen? Chris Reardon advice, available now. Call in for advice, O two O. Eight one double four three four double seven. A line has just become available, boys and girls. A line has become available. O two O eight one double four three four double seven. Uh, Pete Branch is there. Morning, Pete. Hope you're well. Um, Ray Reynolds says, uh, "Morning, Chris. Johnny and I did the City Varieties musical Leeds yesterday, and today are at the Soho Summer Village Fades at five o'clock. There you go. If you want to see some proper entertainment, get yourself down to the Soho Summer Village Fates." Today at five o'clock. I don't even know where that is. I suppose it's in Soho, but I don't know exactly where. Um, I should type it into Google so you know where that is, OK? Ray Reynolds and Johnny will be playing their ukuleles there. Uh, possibly coming along to the Cams and I afterwards, I would guess. I reckon you'll probably come along there afterwards, wouldn't you, at eight o'clock when we do there. Uh, Pete says, I don't need to check bananas for those spiders. They are all by the river near my house. 
Along with yellow scorpions? Oh my God, my cats have killed four tarantulas so far this year. Is that right? Oh, I don't like spiders, Pete. I really don't like spiders. I saw this program, um, I think maybe a couple of years ago now, and it was little children, and when I say little children, seven, eight years old, and they would eat tarantulas. Not only would they eat tarantulas, they would catch them. They would find their nests which are holes in the ground generally. And they would literally put their hand into the... Oh, it's always oh, making my back go now. Oh, they would literally put their hand into this hole and bring out a tarantula holding it in a certain way so it couldn't bite them. Little children doing this. And then they... I don't know how they killed them, but they put them on a stick. <laughs> oh, God. This is... Just... <laughs> they'd put these tarantulas on a stick and, and roast them or whatever it is you do, toast them on a fire, which gets rid of all the little hairs because the hairs are very bad. And one of the way, ways tarantulas protect themselves and um, uh, people who have, some people have pet tarantulas in, in a, in a, God knows why you'd want one of those. Why would you want to keep a pet tarantula? You can't bring it out and stroke it. Oh, come here, little tarantula. Come and sit, mother. Let's have a little kiss. No. But what happens, some people um, have got them in, uh, like, uh, what are they called? Like fishing. Oh, what are those things? Like like fi fish tanks. Like, similar to fish tanks. Or they might be fish tanks. I don't know. They got a, And they take the lid off to clean them. And they put their head over. The tarantula gets frightened. And it fires all these hairs from its back upwards and they end up in people's eyes, all infected, terrible. And they can't get them out. You have to just wait for them to come out naturally. Oh, can you just imagine the pain? You know how it is when sometimes you get something in your eye? Very dangerous. Oh, I don't like a Fancy have a nose down by your river, Pete. Down by the riverside, there is a spider. Down by the riverside, down by the riverside. Oh, how awful. Spiders. Steve says, Chris, as you're a humble person, I need to know if I'm doing my best for you, my son. Other people wanted to harm myself due to me serving in Afghanistan. Uh, what's the what's the question, Stephen? Are you doing the best for your son? Well, I don't, I don't know what you're doing for your son. You have to tell me. Uh, maybe I'll read a bit further up. Let's see. Uh, let's have a look. Ah. I removed me and my son to protect him and it's been weak so far and people now want to start rumours. I, I don't know what you've done. Removed from what? Done what? I, 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 would, I will give you an answer if you've got a question. I will give you an answer, which is not necessarily the right answer. It's only my opinion. Remember that. When I'm talking about stories and that, it's only my opinion. Some of it's comedy. Sometimes I set you up. <laughs> Unfortunately, sometimes some people believe the comedy. <laughs> But, uh, yeah, ask us. I'm not quite sure what you're asking there, Stephen. Have I missed one of your messages? I could do with your advice. Then it says, I need to know if I'm doing the best for my son. Other people wanted to harm myself due to me serving in Afghanistan. You, uh, I'm not sure what you're asking me, Steve. Maybe put it in one message. Then you can then you can ask me, OK? And, I, and I'll let you know, my friend. Uh, good morning to Barbara Leitz, who's with us this morning. Morning, Barbara. Don't forget the phone number 0208 144 Paul says, I hated new houses back in the 80s and they've got even smaller since. Oh, tell me about it. Now, my nephew and my niece both live in new houses. Now, they like the houses. They're quite happy with them. For me, I look and I'm like, where's the garden? You know, the garden is like half the size of this room. Tiny little gardens, but they appear to be happy with them. You know, maybe that's what young people like now. I have no doubt they're probably much more insulated than my house. This house was built, I think, um, early 1980s, somewhere like that. I think this was built. At the time, it was warmer than old brick, totally brick built houses. But I'm sure the new ones are, are far superior in insulation. Will they be standing there as long? I'm not so sure about that. Paul says, you're getting old, Chris. Nothing wrong with your eyesight. Everything you say about London is right. Oh, it's a dump. It's an absolute dump. OK, Stephen says, what's your... Ah, here we go. What's your opinion on people that don't respect ex-army personnel? I, personally, totally and utterly respect army personnel. In fact, 
when I used to do the karaoke at Belushi's in London Bridge, uh, it was about three years ago now since I... Oh, that was a wonderful job, that was. I loved working for the Belushi's brand. We were all like one team, you know. It wasn't like bar staff and DJ. and that. No, we were all one. I felt part of a big team there across lots of... Four of the Belushi's I worked in. Um, <clears throat> and... When and, and you generally knew who the army boys were, even if they weren't dressed like that. Now and again, you get some army boys come in and they were obvious. They were all obvious. They had a certain haircut and a certain way about them. And they'd come up and they'd say, oh, any chance of singing tonight, mate? I said, yeah. And they'd give me the song. And um, and I, 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 I was the same for nurses and members of the police. We didn't, I don't, remember anyone from the fire service anyone coming in you know as customers but those three army police nurses if they ever came up and asked for a record and i i i i i, I, I it must be a sixth sense and i say you in the army or raf or what's the other one or navy and i say yeah they'd say hey, yeah how do you know i said oh i just know i said give me five minutes i'll put you straight on i'd always give them priority I have total and utter respect for people who go out and defend this country about evilness, evilness in the world. I do. So that's that's my thoughts on that. OK. Um, Leon says, best thing I ever did was move out of London. Where are, where are you living, Leon? I'm not sure where you are. Pete says, I have wild lovebirds and parakeets flying near my home. Oh, that's beautiful, Pete. That's beautiful. I um, used to work with someone called Ruby James. Um, she was in... Oh, gosh. Uh, she was in a, 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 a group. Let, let me just see. Let me just type in Ruby James. I can't remember what group. A famous group, actually. Um, Ruby James Music, maybe? Oh, let's have a look. No, I can't find, uh, what, okay, what, let me just look this up for you. No, oh, I can't find it now. Ruby James, Ruby James, come on, where are you, darling? Ruby James, let me see if I can find a photo, then that might give the game away. Is that Ruby there? find her now she was she was in a pop group anyway ruby james years ago and um then she started working on her own and i worked with her many times lovely lady married to uh, a lovely chap called peter who works at one of, in one of the universities i think in sydney australia and uh, i've been to her house a couple of times there and i mention this because their house is like up you know on a on a hill and it overlooks the bush and she has wild parrots and paracletes flying in and out of her balcony. And they sit there and they feed. Beautiful colours. Red, yellow, green. So just, just like yourself, Pete. It's just beautiful. It really is. Really is. Uh, good morning to Julian. I lived in London for 27 years. Never again. I've been living in Mallorca for the last 15 years. Yes, you see, I, I, I'm... I'm... Uh, uh, saying that as well, you know. Were, were you watching my back then? Oh, has something gone wrong with the camera? Is it all right? <laughs> that was ages ago. That message. I didn't see that. Sorry. I think something might have got stuck earlier. Were you watching the back of my head for a while? Morning to Chris Marlow. There you go. One of our top drag queens from years ago. There, Chris. Good morning, Chris. All right. Um. Uh, the mirror ball is bouncing light off your board patch. Is this working now? Is this not working? <laughs> oh dear. Uh, is this working now or not? Oh, it's fine now. Okay, thank you. I don't know what happened then. Something might have frozen then, did it? Should we try again? Were you watching that? You should have been watching that. Like that. Not that. Is that the one that was stuck on? Sorry, I don't know why that is. <laughs> no idea. Sorry. 
Skewed spider, yummy, says John. You haven't eaten skewed spiders, have you? Oh, how awful. Nasty. Nasty little spiders. Nasty spiders. Uh, good morning to Diana. Morning, Diana. Who said they are called reticulating hairs. Is that the ones on spiders, Diana? Oh, that's nasty. Nasty. And they, they, they fire into their eyes, don't they? Anyway, there we are. 0208 144 What's a bit of tell? Oh, squirrel's problem. We've got a squirrel's problem. On my tree, you may have seen uh, my pictures that I put on Facebook of my garden. If you're not on my Facebook, join me on there. Uh, Chris Reardon UK is my Facebook name, OK? Facebook.com forward slash Chris Reardon UK. In the photos, you'll see um, uh, my garden 2017. I've taken some pictures of the garden. One of those pictures is of a tree with four yellow hanging baskets on it. And I looked at that and I thought, well, that looks a bit funny, that basket. Anyway, I didn't think anything more about it. I went out yesterday to, to water the hanging baskets. Two of them are now hanging like that. So if that's your hanging basket up, up correctly, right, it's now hanging like that. And I thought, I wonder what's happened there. So on, now the, the bits that hold the hanging basket. You usually got three chains or something like that. Well, these are three plastic things like that. Something, obviously a squirrel, has chewed through them. What's all that about? Why am I permanently under attack for squirrels in here? It's outrageous. Blasted squirrels. Don't. I hope I don't have to start setting traps for the damn things again. They ruin everything they do. What they're doing is searching for nuts in my hanging baskets. Eventually, you find all the plants on the floor around, <laughs> around the garden. Blasted squirrels. Anyone else got problems with squirrels? Dear, dear me. John, uh, what, you're in Thailand, are you, John? I know you was in Thailand. Are you in Thailand? I'm not quite sure. Good morning to Stuart J. Skinner Morning, who says, Chris, tip July now. Oh, it, does it say June then? Does it? Did it say June on the date? Have I got that wrong as well? I've got a lot wrong today. It didn't say June, did it? Let me have a look. No, July. Thank you, July. I'm not quite sure what planet some people are on this morning. There you are, July. I think it was July. And good morning to... Uh, is that Electric Blue joining us this morning? Morning, Electric Blue. And uh, Alan Russell is there as well. Morning, Alan. So that's been hanging baskets. Now, listen... I still, I've got all these spider plants that I've made this year. No one bloody wants one. I gave away 10 last year. They couldn't get enough of them. This year, I've got, ten, I must have 15 spider plants downstairs. So if you want one, please send us a message. Tell me where you're going to be. Or I might just take them all into one of the pubs. Uh, might or take them all into Central Station tomorrow. Surely I can give them away as prizes. Every time you sing, you win a spider plant. Oh, come on, that's much better than £10 million tonight, isn't it? Eh? It is. Uh, Electric Blue, I've got to tell you, last night, oh, what a show. We had uh, Butch, Toppin's not well. We had Butch with the Dame Edna Experience. First time I've worked with him for about 18 years. What a great show. It was it was really good and busy in there last night. The Saturdays have turned around a bit in Central Station. Uh, we used to have some really dire, quiet Saturdays. But the last two months, they've turned around and we're getting good numbers in on a Saturday now. And good shows as well. It's the show. You missed that show last night. Electric. It was really good. Dave Medner experience was excellent. Really, really good show last night, my love. You're on tonight, aren't you? That, uh, see that Adam J. Stewart as a drag queen? No, that's Electric Blue. He's on at uh, Central Station tonight. I think um, uh, 8, 10 o'clock, 8 o'clock. I can't remember what time you're on. I can't remember. You're in competition with me tonight. Oh, so I'm at Karaoke Eye tonight at the Camden Eye, 8 o'clock. Thank you very much. Yes. All right. Uh, let's do some of these... Um, uh, Stories that I've picked out for you this morning. Yeah, where are we? Here we go. Woman is horrified after her friend serves up a roast dinner of steamed chicken, rice and a big dollop of mayonnaise. They haven't got a clue some of these people how to cook. They. How can you call that a roast dinner? 
A woman has been... This is in this morning's mail. They must be desperate for news this morning. They got they got fed up talking about old Jezza and Teresa, haven't they? And poor old Nick Clegg. No news from him anymore. You only ever see him now when he comes up on the telly to moan, don't you? <laughs> Go away, you've had your chance, dear. Or, mind you, I'd rather see Nick Clegg than Tony Blair. Oh, moan. <laughs> He's like that, isn't he? Remember, shut up, Tony Blair. You've had your chance, dear. Go away. Go away. A woman has been left horrified after a friend invited her around for a roast dinner, but instead served up a dish of steamed chicken and rice. What well, sounds all right to me, except one of them. You could replace the steamed chicken with a nice piece of corn. No dead animals, please. The mum's net user, who did not give her name, told her how she was thrilled to be invited round for supper. What was shocked to be given a plate of cheesy spinach, cauliflower, Yorkshire puddings, stuffing and rice. To add insult to injury, the dish was all covered in gravy and cheese with a big dollop of mayonnaise, she said, in the expletive-filled rant. Talking to the parents in sight, she labelled her friend an effing insane before asking fellow mums net users if she was being unreasonable. And the answer was a unanimous no. Well, I'm sorry, I think it's a unanimous yes for me. You miserable, ungrateful old bag. So someone invites you. Now, I used to... No, I don't want to identify this person. But years and years ago, I'm going back here. I'm going back over 30 years here. This person won't be watching this, let me tell you that. But I used to take someone out to dinner and every time they would find something to complain about. And there might be something wrong with the dinner, but I consider it a bloody insult when all people moan about is after you've taken them out and spent your money on a meal and all they can do is find fault with it. Oh, oh, this is burnt. Oh, this isn't cooked very well. Oh, I don't like the look of that. Just shut up and eat it and be grateful. What a miserable old bag this is. And look at all these people. All these people agreeing with her. They're agreeing with her. All these tweets and that. Well, I, should, I wouldn't invite her around to dinner. Miserable old bag. It's like that ghastly programme... Come Dine With Me. Why, oh why, would anyone want to go on Come Dine With Me only to have their hard work slagged off by all the people that they invite round to dinner? Why would you do that? <laughs> Dreadful people. Dreadful people. There you go. Wendy's, Wendy's on there now. Wendy's on there now. See? Wendy says uh, to, to do that it's disgusting to do that to someone who has cooked you a meal and moan about it. Yeah, we agree, don't we, Wendy? Some friend, fancy tweeting about it. Awful. Yeah, and all these old bags are agreeing with her. That's the thing, Wendy. Oh, you're quite right to complain. Well, I wouldn't have you round my house. Cook you a meal and then have you moan your head off. Dear me, I don't do moaning, as you well know, by watching this programme, boys and girls, you do. Good morning to Justin Peacock. He runs a pub. Good morning, Justin. Uh, oh, we've got another call coming in there. Let's have a go. Let's try that one. Good morning. Who's calling in on line one? Chris. Yes, good morning. Who's that? It's John. John Aitken. Good morning, John Aitken. How are you? <laughs> I'm very well, sir. Are you in, um, are you in the Hammersmith your Vortex? Barry calendar behind you. Oh, what about... Ah, oh, thank you, John. <laughs> well, why didn't you say that, I dear? I need a, some, one, one that... of your friends sit, think you did, and I... Honestly, John, repeated so, it. Like yourself, they speak in riddles. You know, you said <laughs> it's July. Well, uh, yeah, it, it, yeah. Anyway, it's... it's a lovely sunny day in West London. Yes. Even though a lot of your friends tend to hate London, but I'm, you know, you know, I'm like a typical Libra, and I'm up and down with it. So, uh, you're in Amersmith. Yeah. Are you in Amersmith? I'm in Shepherd's Bush. Oh, sh oh, that's a lovely old place. Down in the old bull and bush, mate. Dreadful place <laughs> that is, dear. Dreadful. I know. I, t I tell you what, worse, a bit anyway, of sun. I'm still, I'm still that, enjoying got, it most of the time. You, you got that tiny little bit of grass in the middle of the roundabout. <laughs> That'd yeah, be oh, that's a, coated. That's a, dump. that's a dump. That's where all the um, alcoholics go. 
<laughs> Awful pain. That will be coated later on in old beer cans <laughs> and crisp I packets. I mean, they're at least keeping the old uh, uh, street cleaners uh, in a job, so, uh, yeah. That's fair. That's true <laughs> enough. I see they've got, a, like, a little... Um, a children's play area oh, near the old you know BBC. How much that cost? That cost ten thousand quid. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know who's paying for that. That's all those <laughs> parking fines and that. All Hammersmith keeps giving out. Oh god! And there was a sculpture. There was a massive, hideous sculpture thing that was like two circles and that go around and round. Right. And that was twenty grand. Some famous designer and it was there for like a year. Oh, and I it haven't... was taken away. <laughs> Why was it taken away? Was it nicked? <laughs> no, no, they, they, they moved it somewhere else. So the people were like, "Why did you pay so much?" But now the usual whinges, like people say, "Why spend so much money on this?" And uh, you know, when there's other things can be done. Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, <laughs> so that's... I think it went. I, I think it went towards the kids' play area. Oh, did it? <laughs> and, well, I so see I... them on there. So often I'm going round there. You know, it's not kids playing it. It's all these dodgy people just sitting oh, on no, it. Oh, no, I mean, I mean it's lovely when it's lovely sunny days. There's families there and, you know, little kiddies and then obviously the ice cream man making his money. And, <laughs> um, you know, I, I go there from 99, which is oh. two, quid. <laughs> two quid, not 99. Oh, I do, I do <laughs> like a Mr. Whippy. Oh, my word. Oh, yeah. You, it's, it's you nice think that's cream. dear? Um, and it's, oh, you'd like him. He's very nice. He's about 25. Who's that? Who's that? Who's that? What, the bloke who does the ice creams? Oh, yeah, he's lovely. I think he's Italian, actually, yeah. Oh, don't dare stop on those yeah. double red lines Ol there. Olive, olive skin and dark hair and big oh, brown eyes. That is sounding yeah. nice, John. I tell you what, we go um, down at the garden centre here, Long Acres Garden Centre. Yeah. They do a medium-sized tub. I kid right. you not, £3.50. Oh, it's God. outrageous. And it's the only place... Round it, get, other than the little van. Do you get strawberry vans. sauce? Eh? Do you get strawberry sauce on top of it? You, well, you can have that if you want. I, I like to have it um, plain or with a chocolate thing in it. Oh, but I haven't yeah, had one plate, of those yeah. for weeks. £3.50, one of those is. Oh. Well, I do like ice cream when it's nice and sunny. Though. I'd pay any price, well, to a limit. <laughs> you're not, you're not, you don't put on weight, though. You're one of those people that don't put on weight, John. Oh, believe me, love. I've been there. I've been, I've been up and down like a yo-yo. Have you really? Is there a video of that? Oh, sorry, John, I'm going on to You met me when I was a 28-inch waist in 1991, <laughs> two. Where did I first meet you? Was it Harpo's in Ells Court? It was, yeah. yeah when was, you used to it? do karaoke and quiz, uh, guess the intro. Remember all that? Did I do guess the intro there? I don't remember that. Yeah, no. I was on the bottle of wine you were giving me. Or was it cheap cava or something? I can't was, remember. Was it you kept winning, was it? Yeah, because I, I was good at, I'm, you know, I'm still good at music, but I, I, knew, I know me intros. All oh, right, well, start, that's a that's a good pub thing you should do again because it gets well, people like I do. People I, guessing. I do that. You know the King's Head Theatre Bar where I do the quiz. Oh yeah, yeah. Right. Yeah. Well, the music round is is that. In fact, oh, now fab. this week's music round is. Let me think. I've already done it. TV themes. Oh, it's TV, TV themes. Yeah. Oh, I'm good at that. TV. Yeah. Well, that's our that's yeah. our music as round this week. As long as it's all eighties. <laughs> I, I remember mostly the eighties ones. <laughs> they, they a lot of people, they don't know the I'm, old I ones. I am a child of the eighties. Oh well, I'm a child of the sixties. Oh well, I was born late sixties. I'm fifty this year, love. Are you? Well, you're younger yeah, than me. Fifty. Younger October, than me. Blooming hell. How did that happen? Where did it go? Yeah, I know. <laughs> I know. But you met me when I was young and pretty. <laughs> I did. You used to come to trade as well, didn't you? That club uh, trade. Uh, Did you oh ever go God, there? I used to price. Well, I used to work at Cruise Bar in St Martin's Lane. I remember that. Yeah. Um, oh, I used to work a few bars. I was like mainly. I was in the Page of Boys, love. They've <laughs> all got. Page. They've all gone though, haven't they? They've all oh, gone. Yeah. Job. What do you do I mean, now for a job? Like Compton Street, like, you know, the typical Compton's bar. Went there a couple of months ago and it was horrible. No, oh, very judgmental. Yeah. Judgmental. And Compton Street itself is like Toy Town. No, it's awful. What it's do you do weird. now then? I'm a house husband. All oh, right, okay. I'm I'm kept very well by a, a very happy, um, well, one year older man. What does um, he do? I've told you this on 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 tip program. Oh, but million, um, millions of people who designer who've... for M M M and S. Marks and Spencer's, um, yeah. Yeah, and um, now he keeps me into the lifestyle I'm accustomed to. So, uh... oh, look <laughs> at you! Look <laughs> at you! All you've got we're, to do is cook the meals. Yes, in three weeks, uh, three weeks today we'll be in Bali, love, Bali. Oh, that's a long flight, that is, isn't it? Oh, yeah. But it's like a, oh. we're staying over in Dubai for like two nights and then straight to Bali because it's my niece's 40th birthday from Australia. Oh, lovely, yeah. And um, so I'm going to sort of, sort of have an early 50th. So, yeah, so it's like a lot of my Aussie side family are going to be there and um, as a surprise to my eldest sister. I've got a who... lot. 
I've right. got a lot in Australia as well. They keep they want me to go over there next Easter, but I, it's just the oh. blooming fly. Oh, I love it. I've I, been to Australia ten times, you know. I've been yeah. five. I, li- I, I lived love there it. for a year. Yeah. I, I oh, did yeah. you? Yeah, I went. You oh, know, wow. my sister paid for my twenty-first birthday. Lovely. Um, you know, to go over and I did the whole backpacking thing and I climbed there as rock as it used to be called and I've been up the whole of um, uh, opera top of the opera house and all that stuff. I did all the sites and you know. Loved it, and it was, it was probably the best year of my life. It's, um, it's a wonderful country, Australia. Oh, God, yeah. I mean, I'd, I'd go tomorrow. I really would. Absolutely. Um, well, you're not going but, British Airways, are you? No, I think we're going... Uh, who are we going? Um, Singapore Airlines. So, oh, think, that's the best thing, one. Oh, yeah, hang best on. One. It's the other half does all the booking and stuff. I just say right. yes, dear. Right, right. <laughs> I've been to the whole British Airways um, thing is falling oh, apart. It could be Malaysian, Malaysian Airlines. Yeah, they're very cheap at the moment, apparently, Malaysian. I don't know. I mean, yeah. one, the other half doesn't do their economy seats. He's like, well, you know, turn, no. turn left as you walk in the plane. Neither do on. I. <laughs> no, but do I do? You can't go that whole journey with your knees oh, up God. someone else's oh, bottom, no. I mean, can you? I like, to, I like to. I mean, I always get up every hour so and stretch my legs anyway. Do you? Yeah. So um, it's not yeah. about class at all. It's about the comfort. You know, if you're oh, going God, that yeah. far. I mean, I mean, the, the, the thing he used, we used to like. We, we we both stopped drinking now. Um, he used to like getting on and getting the old glass of champagne as you go turn left. Oh yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> no, that that's not going to happen. <clears throat> so um, but yeah. But no, it's, it's going to be like, I'm looking forward to it. Excellent. We're going for just over two weeks. Oh, uh, that's wonderful. Yeah, so it's wonderful. Like, yeah we'll, we'll have a good, good, good time. Sober. And uh, so we'll remember a lot of things. Yeah. <laughs> would, so, you, uh, would you work again? Would you want to work I would, again? Yeah, I mean, I did a lot of voluntary work, um, you know, and like for elderly people and I'd take them to hospital and stuff and do their shopping and their cleaning and their gardening and, right. you know. Oh, that's good of yeah. you. Yeah, so that's I, did, good of you. I did all that. And, um, you know, I, I got too attached and, you know, they, they pass away and, you know, they do. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. Um, so I, it just upset me and I thought, oh, I can't deal with this, you know. My uh, my sister, yeah. my sister does that. Yeah. My sister does I mean, care. That, in they're fact, lovely. She's... I mean, I, you know, I help like neighbor, neighbors who are yeah. too old to get go to the shops. So I go and get their shopping and do a bit of their little tidying up the little backyards and stuff. Oh, that's good of you. Yeah, my uh, sister. My sister does I'm it. I'm a good boy. I am. They say. <laughs> my sister does it as a job, but she's lost two this year, and it um, oh, yeah. it really upsets and her because it's, you do become upsetting. attached. Yeah, I mean, I try and be tough, but it's like poor, poor the other half is like, you know, you can't do this anymore. It's getting yeah. to you too much. So uh, yeah, because yeah. I'm a big softy. Oh, I, softy, I know that. So. Of course you are. Well, lovely yeah. to talk to you, John. Thanks ever and so much you, for calling in. Well, maybe we'll pop down and do... I've, I keep saying I'm going to do karaoke with you, but uh, I'll pop down and I might surprise you, love. Well, I don't, I don't... I mean, it might be a bit late for that. That's like... Well, it's, no, it's not late, but Monday it finishes at half... It's 8 to half 11. That's at Central yeah. Station. Yeah. Friday is it's 8.30 to midnight. Or yeah. if you want to do the quiz... On Wednesday, that's half past eight to half past ten. That one. All right. And I mean, if you're in, no, ha- the other half doesn't do the tube or anything. We'll, so we'll no. probably Uber there and back. So uh, no, you won't need yeah, to. If you get, I, it, I, get it I, out of the house, <laughs> I can drop. I can drop you back in Shepherd's Bush. I come that way. Oh, <laughs> that'd be that'd be fabulous. Both of you just sitting <laughs> anyway, in the back there. I'll, I'll, I'll sh- chat to you. I'm sure you, I'll be seeing you like nearly. A, you do this every day anyway, don't you? Near enough every day. Yeah. So, all right. So I shall, various I'll chat times. to you about it soon and tell you we're coming down whenever. And, uh, all right. Yeah. Hope to see you soon. Okay. Nice to talk right. to you, John. Thank you. Cheers, mate. Take care. Cheerio Love now. Bye. Bye. Isn't it lovely to get a phone call like that from someone I haven't seen for ages and ages? Just a minute. Uh, oh, hang on. I'm, Pushing the wrong, you didn't lose something then. I'm just a bit perplexed to what happened to the uh, picture earlier because uh, it looked all right to me. Um, um, well, there we go, that's done there. That's right, good. Um, Wendy says she loved listening to John. Yeah, it's always lovely. I tell you what's lovely about this is when someone calls in, uh, anyone calls in to be, it's always nice when someone calls in, but someone who I've never spoken to before, that's always quite exciting. It really is. So if you ever want to call in, maybe not today, but some other day, do you know, I think I'll give them a call today, then feel free. Just pick up the phone and call in, as long as the phone lines. I don't always open the phone line straight away. OK, but uh, if it's ever open, you want a little bit of a chat and you're not sure, you think, oh, I'm going to ring him. I don't think I know what to say, though. All you've got to do is say hello and I'll lead you. All right. I'll lead you if you ever fancy a little chat on there. OK, uh, good morning to David Anthony. Good morning, David. Nice to see you this morning on air. Morning, young David. David Anthony is in the house today. Yes, indeed. 
And uh, Alan says, massive fire in a warehouse where I live. Oh, is there really? Oh, dear. More more disasters happening. Oh, it's just one thing after another, isn't it? Right, we'll wrap up there then, boys and girls. Um, let's just to do the birthdays. First of all, from yesterday, because we weren't with you yesterday. So how many did we have yesterday? Let's see whose birthday it was yesterday. I was talking to um, uh, uh, Lewis. Now, he's a, he's a customer at um, Central Station. And uh, he says, oh, oh, I flicked through and heard you mention my birthday the other day. And I'm like, you, what do you mean you flicked through? You will sit there and watch the whole show. How rude is that? I will not be flicked through. I will not be flicked through and on in the background. I need full attention at all times. Thank you very much. Uh, birthdays yesterday then. Let's have a look. Okie doke. <clears throat> Jess Francis. Hello, Jess. Jess, I worked with at the Golden Lion in Camden Town. She was wonderful to work with. She'd have the whole area ready. The table would be set out. Cups of tea, biscuits and all that. And she was the only one who did that there. Thank you, Jess, for looking after me at the Golden Lion. Really appreciate that. Happy birthday for yesterday, my darling. OK. Uh, happy birthday yesterday also to Kev Lee. Black and white photo, Kev. Black and white photo, dear. A little bit more and you can have colour now. You know that. Happy birthday, Kev. Alexandra Robinson. Happy birthday for yesterday. Chris Sutcliffe. Hello, Chris. Happy birthday to you for yesterday. Kenny Vincent yesterday. And Michael James Ward was uh, 30 years old yesterday. Happy birthday for yesterday to all you lot. And uh, today's birthday, we've got uh, birthdays. We've got Dale Payne, 52 years old today, younger than me. Happy birthday, uh, Dave. Henry O'Donovan is 55 today, just a touch younger than me. Uh, no, just a touch older than me. Happy birthday, Henry. And also happy birthday today to Daniel Oliver. Let's sing the song, gang. Happy birthday to you, happy birthday to you, happy birthday, happy birthday, happy birthday to you. Alright, whether it's your birthday yesterday or today, happy birthday to you. Thanks for joining us on the show tonight. Now, don't forget, it's Sunday night. So tonight I'll be hosting karaoke. It'd be lovely to see some of you down there at the Camden Eye in Camden Town. It's karaoke Eye at the Camden Eye, Camden Town. You come out of the tube station, you cross the road, it's there. Ten seconds walk from the exit of the train station, as long as you come out the right side, uh, to the pub. If you come out of the train station, look over the road. If you can't see the Camden Eye, you've come out the wrong entrance. Go out the other one, look across. You, it's so obvious. And it's right on a corner. It's not a massive pub, but it's just, just about the right size. Fantastic sound system in there. And um, last week, I, I don't think there was one single person who couldn't sing. Remember, there are no bad singers at karaoke. It's all about having a go. Doesn't matter whether you're a fantastic singer or a not-so-fantastic singer like me. I'm not, not a fantastic singer, but I'll have a go. Although last week we had some fantastic singers in it. We really did. So if you're coming along tonight, Camden Eye Karaoke, uh, Karaoke Eye at the Camden Eye every Sunday night between 8 and around about 10.45pm, OK? Apart from that, enjoy your Sunday. I shall go and do my uh, fry-up lunch now. And I'll see you again very soon. Thanks for watching and listening. Cheerio now.